Now we're going to start our discussion of uh, relativity. Uh, so we will be talking about Einstein's theory of uh, special relativity uh, in this course. Uh, Einstein's theory of relativity is able to predict experimental observations for all speeds, for low speeds as well as speeds close to the uh, speed of light. And uh, well, the Newtonian mechanics that we have been uh, talking about, the classical mechanics, basically applies as uh, the speed of the object goes to zero. So for speeds uh, much less than uh, the speed of light. So basically that's what we mean by speed of the object goes to zero. It becomes much less than the speed of light than uh, Newtonian relativity, Newtonian mechanics applies. Um, so the relativistic effects that Einstein considered are important in uh, global positioning uh, systems, GPS units, uh, nuclear power plants, particle accelerators where the particles are accelerated to speeds close to the speed of light. So uh, we should uh, pay attention to these relativistic effects. Okay, so uh, in order to position ourselves for the theory of special relativity, first we have to recall Galilean relativity. Now, Galilean relativity is based on inertial reference frames. An inertial reference frame is one in which the acceleration is zero for any object on which the net force is zero. Basically, um, Newton's laws of motion uh, were stated in reference to these inertial reference frames. Uh, any frame moving with constant velocity with respect to another inertial reference frame is itself an inertial reference frame. So these are things we know from uh, Newton's uh, classical physics. And most importantly, the laws of mechanics must be the same in all inertial reference frames. All right. <clears throat> so uh, let's look at an experiment. We have a reference frame, S reference frame at rest, and we have an observer on this reference frame. This is the lab frame. And there is a reference frame S prime, which is moving uh, to the right with a velocity V with respect to the reference frame at rest. And there is a person in this reference frame. For example, this person is in a car that has a constant velocity V to the right, um, with respect to us in the lab reference frame and the person inside the car throws a ball up and the ball comes back down. Now, when this person performs this experiment, when we view it from the uh, lab reference frame, uh, S frame, we see that the ball moves up and down, but at the same time, uh, the, this reference frame is moving. Uh, so therefore, we can see that the ball follows a parabolic path, but the observer on S prime says the ball moves up and down. So what do these two observers agree on? They agree on the gravitational force. Uh, so the ball has to uh, come down under the effect of the gravitational force. So this is what they agree on. Okay, so if we look at an event that is occurring, uh, viewed by the S reference frame and S prime reference frame. Once again, S prime reference frame is moving with a relative uh, velocity V to the right. So the S reference frame has a coordinate system X, Y coordinate system. S, pi, S prime reference frame has X prime, Y prime. So <clears throat> if we wait for a time interval T, let's say that T equals to zero, the origins of these two reference frames uh, were coinciding. So this is the origin of the prime reference frame. Uh, so they were at the same point. After a time interval of delta t or t, uh, we see that the origin has moved with respect to the origin of the S reference frame, uh, total uh, distance vt. Now this event that is being observed by S prime reference frame has a location uh, defined by its coordinate on the S prime reference frame X prime and on the S reference frame X. And how are these uh, X and X prime related? Well, you can see Vt plus X prime must be equal to X. So 
as prime reference frame describes x, y, z, t uh, in the spatial and time coordinates and s prime frame x prime y prime z prime t prime from t equals to zero to time t s prime moved by an amount v t so x prime plus v t is x or x prime is x minus v t uh, y and z are the same because this event uh, is occurring well, there is no difference uh, the, between y coordinates because the s prime reference frame is moving on the x axis, not on the y or z axis. And the time that this event occurs as measured by s prime and s reference frames are the same. So Galilean space time transformation equations is what we observe x prime x minus vt, y prime y, z prime z, t prime t. So this is uh, based on one assumption that the time is absolute. So whether I uh, look at this event from S reference frame or S prime reference frame, the time of the event should be the same. And if an object moves by dx along x-axis in time interval dt measured by s, so we take these equations x prime is x minus vt. What is dx prime? dt it is dx dt minus v because dx prime is dx minus v dt v is a constant okay so dx prime dt is the uh, speed of the object as measured by the s prime reference frame ux prime uh, dx dt is the one measured by the lab frame ux minus v this is the galilean velocity transformation so ux is measured by s ux prime is measured by s prime all right so we have reviewed uh, galilean transformation and galilean relativity so uh, first of all uh, we are discussing Einstein's theory of special relativity in this class and Einstein's uh, theory boils down to Galilean relativity for speeds much less than the speed of light. Uh, however, we do reach speeds close to the speed of light where Einstein's relativistic effects are important in GPS units, nuclear power plants and particle accelerators. And the laws of mechanics must be the same in all inertial frames where inertial frame is the one in which if net force is zero acceleration is zero for an object and all reference frames moving with constant velocity with respect to an inertial frame are also inertial reference frames so we consider two inertial reference frames here s and s prime the person in the inertial not in uh, reference frame that moves with velocity v throws a ball up and it falls down and uh, the s reference frame measures a parabolic path board for the ball because the s prime reference frame is moving in that time interval in which the ball is moving up and down and they agree on the gravitational force therefore um, we have the same newton's laws of motion that apply to this uh, ball on the y-axis so that's the gravitational force so uh, Galilean space-time transformation equations for a reference frame that moves on the x-axis with a relative velocity v with respect to the s reference frame are x prime equals x minus v t y prime is y z prime is z and t prime is t this is based on the assumption that time is absolute so time doesn't transform between these uh, reference frames and on the other hand, if we take a derivative of this equation with respect to time, if we are uh, trying to measure the velocity of an object from S or S prime reference frames, uh, ux prime is ux minus v is the Galilean velocity transformation.